church. The, now, well, yeah, you think. The Army Corps of Engineers says, if you touch that bridge, we'll arrest all three of you. And all the workers. I came in with the oh yeah. And I said to the board, public meeting, in the papers, that we will give you 24 hour protection at your homes, we'll give you armed guards wherever you go, we'll call out the posse, I will not charge the county a dime of overtime, I'll have my officers, I will, we all will, our deputies are all yours, 24 hours a day, we'll put armed guards out at the construction site, we will protect all of you, protect you from our own government? Yes, that's what we were doing. And so, to make a long and short of this, we fixed the bridge. Yeah. And another kicker, they said $50,000 a day fine for every day that you're working on the bridge without our permission. $50,000 a day. We're not building a new bridge. We're not making the bridge bigger. We're just putting it back the way it was. And they said if we touch it, they all go to jail. So, ha. You know how many of the Board of Supervisors went to jail? Zero. How many of the workers went to jail? Zero. Do you know how much money we paid in fines? Zero. You know what the, the Army Corps of Engineers did? They went back to Washington, D.C., where they belong. Good. Okay. All right. They do not. Believe me, there is none of this that they want to fight with the sheriffs about. And like I said, the sheriffs can keep this peaceful. Let me remind you of the telltale motto and overall message of this book is that your sheriff is in charge and one of the main reasons that he's in charge is because he reports directly to the power source we the people that's why he's the most powerful law enforcement officer he is not a bureaucrat nor does he report to one he reports to you and that's why when he promised to uphold and defend and protect your constitutional rights. That's why this is a constitutional republic. Because those who kept that or made that oath have the responsibility to keep it. And they promised you that they will not allow your rights to be violated. Whether it's by the street wolves or the Washington DC wolves, it is the same. They have the same obligation to keep their word to you, their employer. And that's as simple as that gets. Now, we document every bit of that, what I just said, in this book. Do you think maybe this is worthy to pass around a little bit? Okay, let's do it. Now, one other thing. Let me make this perfectly clear, and I'll say this to every camera. And my advisor says I'm not supposed to point. So. <laughs> The President of the United States cannot and has not the authority to tell your sheriff what to do. Okay. Now, now, so if that be the case, which it is, then none of the auxiliary departments underneath and all the other bureaucracies underneath the president, they have no authority to tell your sheriff what to do either. Just like the Army Corps of Engineers, they're last on the list. We, we, you know, we have problems with the Forest Service. We have problems with all these guys. You know, different, different sheriffs are calling me all the time. What do I do about these guys doing this in my county? And they're talking about federal agents. There's a lot of sheriffs getting ready. And I know some other sheriffs who have already threatened to arrest some of these guys. But you know what? I really hope. I can't wait. Some of this would actually be fun, you know? And this, this is one that I think would be fun. For the sheriffs to warn maybe the IRS that there will be no more random audits conducted on the people that he works for because random audits are unconstitutional. Now. Does your sheriff, does your sheriff uh, conduct random audits in any way? How about the worst thing that could happen in any 
uh, neighborhood or county, and that's child abuse. Does your sheriff get to conduct random audits to see if children are being abused? Of course not. Even as horrible as that is, we still don't get to violate the Constitution to go after criminals, even if it's for the children, as Bill Clinton always said. Every time he said that, you know you had to hold on to your wallet and your children real tight, okay? Now, so if we can't conduct random audits for that, then the IRS surely can't conduct them just to see if we're doing our finances okay, you know? That doesn't hurt children. So we get those same sheriffs to write a letter again, putting the IRS and the federal government on notice again. There will be no random audits conducted on the citizens of what county is this? LA. LA County. Yeah. And Sheriff Baca writes that letter and he says, this isn't going to happen anymore to our citizens. And then the IRS wants to try to see if that's going to happen and they do it. Wouldn't this be fun to arrest a couple of IRS agents? <laughs> God. Oh. And I think, I, don't you just think that that paradigm shift is going to get to somebody then? You think somebody's going to get it by then? That they understand that their jurisdiction is a 10 mile square radius in Washington, D.C., and that they better stay there? Okay? Now, and, and people think I make this stuff up. This isn't made up. This is not pie in the sky. These are not fairy tales. This is documented evidence with a Supreme Court victory behind everything I'm saying. Okay? And it's also, a lot of this is just common sense. You know? Like not allowing random audits. I mean, where did random audits ever come from? How absurd. And gun control. 23,000 gun control laws in this country, all of them unconstitutional. When was the last time we repealed any of them? You see what happens when these laws get made? Do you see why it's so vital we move now on what we're talking about here? Because we might be reaching the point of no return very soon. And we've got to get busy. And that's why I say this focus has got to be part of all of us, okay? Now, uh, in this uh, decision, Mac versus uh, United States, or Mac Prince versus United States, some very amazing things are happening, okay? And, and let, me, let me go back just one minute before I get into this. One, one other point I wanted to make about the oath of office. It, 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 it became something that I almost couldn't remain tactful on in discussing this with some officers and other elected officials. It almost became a point of rage, and I, I don't like to get mad. I, I don't like to lose my cool. But I have a hard time with this huge disconnect, and it's almost you know as big as the canyon in Arizona to me. And, and I've been there, and I've hiked down it, and it is huge, and it's beautiful. But this one is not. This Grand Canyon disconnect is horrible and it's ugly, and I can't take it anymore, okay? And it's this, that the very people who swear, raise their right arm and swear publicly that they will uphold and defend and protect and obey the United States Constitution, and then when really pressed, on constitutional issues that they need to address. They'll actually tell you, their boss, that it's not my job to uphold and defend the United States Constitution. I can't take that. These are people who have promised us and who make money working for us and now refuse because it might be one of their buddies in the federal government. I have yet to hear any of these, and there's a sheriff in Missoula who's been bad-mouthing me about the message I left there with his citizens about this, same stuff I'm talking to you about. This says, this is, oh, oh, this is just about politics, that Mac's message is about politics. So it's just playing games. No, this is about truth and honesty and integrity and keeping your word 
and knowing and understanding the Constitution. And he, and he was kind of making these excuses about, well, you know, we get along with the federal government just fine. You know, I have coffee with them every Friday. 